welcome back to my channel and today in this video we are going to continue what we had learned in our last video so we were able to upload images and when i talk about images see this kind of images we were able to upload in our last video to our certificate but there are certain things which now if we want to control for example the file name or maybe you know where the file is getting uploaded Right. These are certain things which we would ideally need to control and we will see how that can be done in this video. All right. So the first thing which I would like to tell you is there is a way where instead of this in you know, a very random file name, if you want to keep the original file name, what you can do is call a method on this thing called preserve file names. Okay. And with that, what will happen is if I now refresh, delete this, and if I upload the file, maybe before that, I'll delete these files so that it is easy to understand what is happening. Okay. Um, go to the browser and let us upload the code file. Okay. It got uploaded. Now, typically, what happens is it is first uploaded to the temp folder. This is our file, right? And when we hit save, the temp file is deleted and our actual file name, now as you can see, this is created over here. So the temp file got cleared up. And if we look at the database, obviously this is being reflected. However, there is one problem. What if, Let's just say I create one more certificate. And what I want to do is see there are two files. One is code and one is app. Okay. And let's for some time rename it and make this as code. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that this file exists over here, right? If I want to upload one more file with the same name, but it's a different image, right? The previous one had the code actually, but now for some reason, let's just say the file name is code, but I am showing a screenshot. What if I up try to upload it here? Okay. It uploads it into the temp folder, which is quite expected because this is a random file name. That's not a problem. But if I hit save, It is showing this. However, can you see this thing now has overwritten my previous code file, which basically means now this is showing correctly, but the dummy one has wrong file because we had actually shown the code over here. So that basically means that even if you do a preserve file name, it can potentially be a problem unless and until you are able to do something about it in a way that you know the folder is different or something like that because if two files with the same file name are uploaded to that folder it will overwrite and that's pretty ex much expected because it doesn't need to know that so how do we control this how do we make sure that the file names are unique so there's a f function which will allow us to do that, which is we can add this function. Let me do full screen, which is get uploaded file from storage using this is a function which we can use. And we have the ability to, to fire a closure over here, which is we get the temporary file and we return the file original name, which is very much similar to what we have over here. but I can add a prefix, okay, not here, but rather in here. So an, in prepend, I can basically add anything to the file name. And what I will then do is I'll prepend now timestamp. With this in place, let's see what is happening. I'll delete this mapping, hit save. Obviously one thing is Laravel will not delete the files 
which you are clearing up. This is something which you need to do manually because Laravel doesn't know that, but obviously it will make it null. Okay. And now if I upload one file over here, let me see this is the screen. So we will name it as app again. And this is my code. Let's upload this. All right. And once I save, can you see a number appended to the file name? Let me show you. This is what is happening. So I am now prepending that timestamp, which basically makes it unique because getting a file at the very same moment is really very difficult. I mean, it's an edge case. So that's why I would say with a basic edge case scenario understanding, we can do that. But then let's just say if you want to play a bit safe with it, right? And say what happens if two users of different from different, I mean, two different users at that same moment uploaded the file. So what you can do is you can say that you know, there is a directory where I want that file to be uploaded. And with that, maybe, you know, you can uh, ensure that if directory name has a user ID so that there is no clash, because if I upload something, I will only see the override and I won't see something which is being uploaded by someone else. And hence, what we can do is specify the directory. So there is a function which I can call. For now, I will just do certificate images. And this function will ensure that and right now we are directly uploading all the files in this directory, right? In the public thing. If I remove it, upload the code over here. And if I hit save, well, can you see this? Basically what has happened is it created a folder and uploaded the file there. So we have that ability as well. And now really the last one, which is just imagine if you, for some reason, want to keep the original file name because we have appended something to hit to this and it is still fine, but we, we lost that information of the original file name. And if you want to keep it in some way, there is an ability to do that, which is, let's just say, I want to keep a string field, original file name. Again, this has to be nullable, but I, I don't think you will generally need that for the certificate, but in some cases you might, and hence I am showing you that this is possible. So we have a field called original file name. I'll need to revert my migration for some time. I'll just do rollback and I'll migrate again. Table is empty, but I have a new column, which is original file name. And then there's a function called something called a store. Yes, store file names in. And in here I can do original, original file. I don't want to get that name wrong right now. Okay. So with this, let's see what is going to happen. Obviously I don't have this certificate. And if I come over here, dummy certificate, copy this, go to my folder and upload this file. This is done. Hit save come into the database and can you see the original file name is stored and the path is also like this, which basically means that if I want, I can actually not do this or even not do this. What will it do? It will create that random file name because the you know, filament was already doing that. Let me again show you what is going to be the final thing. I'll upload the app image, okay. And if I hit save, can you see the file name? So basically that means inside my certificate images, I have an image name, which is completely normal, um, you know, random. I mean, there's no way to guess it. 
and I still retain the original file name, right? And this is something which if you feel is your use case, you can just do it. That's the only thing. But yeah, there's no hard reason you have to do it. If you feel that the file name is important, you can do that. So we have the directory and we have store file name in which basically allows you to store the original file name in an additional field. So that's pretty much it guys. That's how the file upload works. It has a lot of interesting functions which, which you know you can play around based on your requirement. And I'm I'm pretty happy with the you know, widget which we get, you know, the file field when it is uploading, you know, the disabling of the save button and those kind of small, small things really gives an overall great user experience and that's what filament is that's where i really like this package where you can create great crud screens with just fast space i hope you like this video if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel